10. So welcome to a, another video. Um, this one is going to be on Nazi economic policy. So hopefully by now you have learnt about how the Nazis have got into power. Um, it's really important that you um, learn about that because it's such a, a popular topic to come up in exams. Um, now, the Nazi economic policy is um, the next unit we're going on to. It is tricky in the sense that it's all about how the Nazis managed to get people back into work and then looking at whether or not people's standard of living increased. Now, standard of living is a measure of how happy people are but also how much money they have so how much money they have to feed their families and also any money that they have left over for things to do in their free time leisure activities and we'll be looking at the strength through joy program which the nazis introduced uh, to help bring about happier lives for their workers now, you've got to remember, whenever you look at Nazi economic policy, um, that the 1930s was a really, really tough time for uh, ordinary people in Germany. There was um, high levels of unemployment, up to 6 million people unemployed in Germany, and the worst affected were young people, um, and mainly like people in their 20s that should have been working um, in kind of factory work or kind of, you could say low paid jobs. Um, and they were the ones that really suffered in terms of being able to feed their families. Um, and they were the ones as well who got behind the Nazis because the Nazis had promised them work and bread, remember that slogan, as their way of getting people to vote for them. So the first thing I would suggest you do to learn about the Nazi economic policies is look at the knowledge organiser, which is slide 21 of the Germany unit, which can be found on the school website. Um, and that gives lots and lots of detail about the benefits of Nazi economic policy um, for ordinary workers. Um, the main thing that um, Hitler and the Nazis managed to do was create jobs for people. And the main way he, uh, the Nazis did that was through a huge building program. So they built loads of things like roads, hospitals, railways, schools, all sorts of things that would help the country's infrastructure, in other words, its buildings and the way that it holds together as a society. But also by building those things, um, the Nazis are creating jobs because you need builders, you need architects, etc. in order to make those things. The other way that the Nazis increased employment was through the armed forces. Now, if you remember, the Treaty of Versailles had restricted um, membership of the armed forces to 100,000 men. Now, the Nazis got rid of that and allowed for more people, especially young people, to join the armed forces. In fact, closer to World War II, they introduced what's known as conscription, which is where every young man had to join the army. And they created programmes for young people to join the army if they could not find any other job. So that was giving them employment, but it was also giving them a sense of patriotism, love for their country, and a sense of pride as well, because within the armed forces, they'd be given a uniform, they'd be given somewhere to live, 
Um, they were given a very basic wage. Mostly they were given food and shelter and they were given a new purpose in life, which is so important for these young people who had nothing under the Weimar Republic during the Great Depression. They, were, they had no purpose. So by being able to join the forces, they were able to kind of have that new leash of life, I suppose. Um, now, it didn't suit everybody, obviously, but, you know, in terms of positives of a Nazi economic policy, you know, joining the armed forces was a, a way forward for many young people. The other group that really benefited from Nazi economic policies was the farmers. And the Nazis did this by guaranteeing food prices. This meant that if a farmer produced a certain number of crops, they would be guaranteed a certain price for those crops. So that meant that the farmers would not have to suffer hardship. And this is important because many people in Germany, about 60% of people still lived in rural areas and so, and so still relied on farming and uh, the Nazis really put a huge amount of value on farming and the traditional countryside way of life um, because they knew that conservatives, if they were given the right price for their crops, would therefore support the Nazi party and their policies. The downside of this was that food prices were rising for workers in the cities. This meant that bread prices remained high for normal working families in the cities. So this benefited the farmers who were selling the grain to make the bread. However, it didn't always benefit the factory workers. Having said that, the factory workers did have some benefits. For a start, there was many new factories that opened under Nazi Germany, many of them making armaments. Now, armaments are weapons, effectively, because Hitler knew that he's going to need to go to war at some point with the rest of Europe. He kind of had that in the back of his mind from 1933 onwards, and certainly from 1936, he ramped up the armaments program. And this meant jobs for people in factories. Now to keep the working force happy, to keep them working hard, he introduced something called the Strength Through Joy scheme. What this was, was a way of ensuring that people were using their free time when they're not at work productively doing leisure activities. And the Strength Through Joy scheme offered up cheap holidays so people could go and visit the countryside in Germany and appreciate their country and the leisure activities. Okay, now your knowledge organiser goes into lots of detail about those activities so it's worth reading. The other initiative that the Nazis introduced was cheap cars because they understood that by a family having a car it meant that they would improve their quality of life because they could leave their area, go to the countryside and pursue leisure activities. So they introduced an initiative whereby the workers would pay a certain amount out of their weekly wages um, and in return they would get a Volkswagen Beetle. Okay, and that was known as the people's car. So next time you see a Volkswagen Beetle pass by, you may look at it differently because it was a creation of the Nazi party. Um, now, there was some downsides to this, and that is that when production of all non-armament, uh, non-armaments was introduced, in other words, when the Nazis stopped producing anything that wasn't for the war effort, at that point, people who had paid into the scheme for a Volkswagen 
did not get their money back and they did not get their car. So some workers lost out, um, even though in good faith they'd paid towards that car. And instead that money was sent to the war effort to creating armaments, weapons for the war instead. There were some other downsides to the economic policy for the Nazis or for ordinary people under the Nazis. Um, for a start, workers were not allowed to join a trade union. Now, trade unions represent workers and they fight for workers' rights. For example, if they feel like wages are too low or working conditions are not safe, then the trade unions will do something about that. They will, you know, pressure the government into doing changes. However, the Nazis did not want that to happen because the Nazis didn't want anybody to argue with their economic policies. So instead, they introduced their own trade union and that was called the DAF. And every Nazi worker had to join that union, okay? It was mandatory. Now, they did um, do things to support workers but on the whole, this union, all it did really was keep workers under the form of a Nazi party. So, for example, workers did not have the right to strike um, and actually working hours increased. So they were being made to work longer hours and their wages fell as a result of that. So they were getting the same wage even though they were working longer hours. So it wasn't fair. So their rights as workers were taken away. The other people that lost out were small businesses. So small privately owned businesses by middle class members of society. And that is because the Nazis owned a lot of factories and um, also they got uh, on board lots of big businesses to um, help increase the economy. But the big businesses kind of took that business away from small business owners. So they really struggled under the Nazi regime. Now, one real positive of the Nazi economic policy was that unemployment dropped. And that is because of the things I've just mentioned about um, creating building programs, making people join the army and the rearmament program which opened up lots of factories. So that helped to bring young um, workers into the workforce. However, the Nazis claimed by the late 1930s that they had eradicated, in other words, got rid of unemployment altogether. In other words, everybody in Germany is employed. Now that simply was not true because of something called invisible unemployment. And what they did was they basically took women off the employment register. So women were expected to stay at home. They weren't classed as part of a workforce, which meant that, you know, 50% of the population were unemployed effectively. Um, but, that didn't, but that did not show up on the statistics. On top of that, Jews and other minority groups were removed from the register as well. So when you take women and the Jewish community and other minority groups, and that's quite a significant number of a population that were unemployed, but were not showing up on the official statistics. So if you get a question on unemployment, you can talk about, yes, OK, the Nazis did get people into work. Certainly they did, yes, reduce the unemployment rate, but they also fiddled the figures by removing these key groups of people from the employment register.